Breath of the Wild is one of the most popular speedruns out there. Not only does the open world nature of the game attribute to this, but the players themselves. Setting out tons of challenges and speedruns for each other to accomplish. Things like dog percent, damage just 100 percent, and more, the community came together to produce and route such categories. Just last month, I became the first person in the world to 100% the game Damageless. It has been done! In the 100% Damageless route, we get this trick called Moon Jump. Moon Jump allows us to go anywhere we want basically by infinitely jumping. Sounds cool, right? It also lasts through save files, so a big question I used to get a lot is, how do you get rid of Moon Jump? Simple, all you have to do is mount something in the game. I have no clue on the specifics of this or why this happens, but all I do know is that there is a large, surprisingly large amount of mouthful creatures in this game. And guess who is one of them? Well, the big old red fish guy himself, Sidon. The game thinks when you do the Ruta quest, you actually mount him, considering in my damageless run, it got rid of Moon Jump, since you need something to mount to get rid of it. So building off that, my Twitch chat and I wanted to make something special. How about a speedrun revolving around mounting, with our precious lad Sidon being a part of that? So we got to work. This is how we mount in mount percent. Big ups to Apple Freezer with big help with routing. Go check him out, he streams sometimes. And also big ups to Julep for being a big brain with this category in the first place. Also, if you guys want to see me 100% the game damage just plus the DLC, press that sub button because at 20,000 subs, I will be doing exactly that. Now this category was pretty difficult to route out, not only because did we have to figure out exactly what we are mounting, but mostly how we are going to mount these things. You see, one of the creatures was and still is a giant pain in the ass, mostly due to RNG and what day the in-game clock is set to. I'll explain that more once we get to that point, so let's just go over exactly what we are mounting. In Breath of the Wild, we are able to mount any horse, the giant horse, the royal horse, any type of bear, a buck, which is a male deer, a doe, which is a female deer, a stall horse, any type of lionel, simply getting on its back is okay since you can't technically tame one, Tiba, Sidon, and eventually the Lord of the Mountain. You see, not only do we have to mount Tiba and Sidon, but we have to figure out Lord of the Mountain shenanigans as well, so let's just go over the route to see how I did everything in only one hour. As every category starts off, we go sprinting for the tablet and eventually clip out of Shrine of Resurrection. And since we do need time of day, we'll be going to do the time of day version of Plateau. Which means watching the first cutscene with this really nice leaf, then making our way to grab the shield from the Boko camp pretty close to the shrine. After we grab the shield, we grab a lot of food because food routing can actually be pretty tight in this route. Then we grab the axe and make our way to stasis. We make sure to grab the sledgehammer from stasis, then BTB over to cryo. We do cryo the speedrun way, then BTB over to magnesis. We make sure to end the BTB fairly early to fall into the woods, because not only does it have some more food for us to grab, but also has arrows that we will need for our run. Then we sprint over to the swamp to grab some more elemental arrows, then make our way over to magnesis finally. We make sure to break the boxes in front of mag for any extra materials we can grab, and do the classic shield clip, and then go inside the shrine and finish it up. Once out, we want to box walk over to the Boko camp, then try to BTB off the Boko over to bombs, and classic Jordan, I failed this BTB, so I had to do the clown sprint over to bomb shrine. After bombs, all I have left to do is grab the glider, so using a few different launches, we make our way over there quickly. After we do grab the glider, we can finish up Plateau and jump into the Temple of Time to grab ourselves another stamina piece. With this, we can comfortably tame more of the creatures we have to mount. Now we want to activate the tower so that we can activate other shrines so we can use them as teleport spots for certain sections of the run. Our next stop is Moglaton. By using a few wind bombs, we eventually get to a Moblin, whom we will set up and freeze by lining up ourselves and timing ourselves perfectly, we can actually launch all the way to this group of durian trees on Satori Mountain. I make sure to grab enough durians for the run, some wood, then go ahead and wind bombed over to Mog to get a free teleport spot. After Mog, we grab some Maduro carrots that are close by that give us full stam if we cook and eat, so these will definitely come in handy with mounting things. Now remember when I said we have to mount Sidon? Well, it just so happens his quest comes with one prerequisite. 
20 shock arrows. And there's nowhere just to buy shock arrows easily, so we have to find them. It just so happens that there is four chests of them on our way over to Mado. So if we launch the first three just fine, we end up in Rito and we can get another one on the way to Mado. Once in Rito, we make sure to buy some shrooms so that we can cook some food that protects us from the elements, just the cold. We also make sure to cook the durians and carrots as well, and we also make sure to change time of day to noon twice because of one thing, the Lord of the Mountain. If we do this, we can avoid a lot of RNG required with Lord of the Mountain, but it also risks some consistency, which I will explain later on. Now we talk to the big bird and then Tiba's wife, then afterwards we grab the last set of arrows, then activate Shaw Warvo as another free teleport so we can come back easily. The reason we do this is that pretty close by, there's two easy mounts, so we will grab those and teleport back. We simply wind bomb over to the first mount, the bear. I just get on top of it, tame, and then done. And now really close by is our second mount, the Lionel. Since we can't actually tame any Lionels in this game, simply getting on its back is enough. So we get on its back and teleport back to Schwab Warvo because now we gotta get on top of our friend, Tiba. In order to do this, we actually need to do Tiba's target shooting minigame. It doesn't take long at all, just five quick arrow shots and then we are done. As soon as we see Link on Tiba in gameplay, we simply ask Tiba to bring us back to the ground and we can make our way up to the next mount. After Tiba, we simply teleport back to Great Plateau Tower and wind bomb over to a pack of horses close by that has the giant horse and a convenient group of horses. In the middle of this, I realized Lord of the Mountain actually spawned, so I made sure to teleport back to Mog to be able to tame this mythical beast. Now this is where the RNG aspect of this run comes in. You remember when I said we had to change time of day twice? Well, it turns out Lord of the Mountain will spawn on the day of a waxing crescent moon, or the day after a new moon, after 12pm. So since the beginning cutscene of the game starts off on the same day every time, you only need to change time of day twice. What's weird is when Lord of the Mountain is exactly going to spawn. You see, he spawns any hour from 12pm to 12pm the next day. Now, if you haven't guessed already, this means we could basically mount everything we need to and end up just sitting there waiting for Lord of the Mountain. So by changing time of day as soon as we can, we can kind of bypass this RNG by doing the route in this time frame. The only issue is seeing when Lord of the Mountain will spawn, because not only is the hour he spawns random, but the length is also random. You aren't guaranteed at least one hour, so every hour you want to check to see if the green light is above Satori. Oh, and one more thing. You actually can't be near Satori Mountain at all while waiting for it to spawn. You actually have to be somewhere else, otherwise he will just never spawn. It's like a weird flag in the game that if you're in that area, it won't set. It was very weird and it was probably the hardest part about actually routing the category. Thankfully in the run, I got really good RNG and was able to mount and tame it relatively smoothly. Afterwards, I wind bomb south to a group of deer and successfully mount a buck and then I change time of day because it turns out there's also a stall horse here. Then boom. More good luck because a doe was just chilling next to us, so it was an easy mount again. Then I just find the stall horse and do the same. Now after the stall horse, I want to wind bomb over to the royal horse to mount and tame. And then after, we could finally teleport back to Great Plateau Tower and finish up the two creatures I talked about earlier. The giant horse and then the normal horse. After successfully getting the double, I try my hand at a really hard BTB that should get us to Ruta relatively quickly. I suck, so I didn't go very far, so I just ended up wind bombing the rest of the way. After using up all my food, we finally have gotten to Sidon. Now after sitting through this amazing fish drama that is unskippable and lasts like 10 years, we finally make our way over to the final mount, Sidon himself. After he talks to us then verifies all of our arrows, once gameplay finally rolls in, we can press the final split button allowing us to take world record and get the world's first sub hour time in mount percent. Ending it on the beautiful fish man himself, this category is very weird and was a monster to try to route. Thank you again for Apple for helping me out immensely, probably wouldn't have done this this well without you. But now I want to announce something that I have planned. I am announcing the Joe Dunn challenge. 
That's right, I'm putting a $170 bounty on this category. Now what does that mean exactly? It means I'm basically hosting a little competition. From whatever day this video is posted to 30 days after, whoever has first place on speedrun.com will win $100. Then whoever gets second will win $50 and then third will get 20. How do you submit to this little competition? Well, by going to speedrun.com, then going to the Breath of the Wild category extensions board, then clicking on Mount Percent, you will see a little submit run option. By clicking that, you can submit your run. Make sure to follow all the speedrun.com rules because those will be used in this competition. I look forward to seeing more people get into Breath of the Wild speedrunning and maybe hopefully this will give some of you that little push you need. I will also be making separate posts going more into detail so follow my Twitter and join the Discord to see when those happen. I will also be doing 100% damageless plus the DLC at 20,000 YouTube subs so if you want to see me suffer even more than I already have, press that big old sub button. Thank you so much for watching as always, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day, stay safe out there, the world is crazy.